All right, let's get into it. Uh, I hope everything sounds okay. I do have a fan going off to the uh, side there, but in today's video, we're going to be, I am going to be teaching you how to do an oil change. I'm gonna be doing it my way, uh, which I mean, everyone has their own way of doing things. Um, but I'm gonna show you the way that I perform my own oil change on my own personal vehicle today. We're gonna be doing an oil change on the spool. Uh, that is, well, I might be doing one other thing, but I probably won't do a recording on it just cause not everyone can do their own fuel injection cleaning service, but I already have everything set up here. I'm gonna just kinda get started going. Um, before I do, I wanna first and foremost say thank you to all the support on the recent videos. I appreciate you guys very much. Thank you to all the new subscribers. I hope you guys have been enjoying the content and I'm here to continue uh, making that content and uh, hope you enjoy uh, the videos to come. So first and foremost, uh, I already have uh, all of my posts set up so that I can just lift this straight up. Obviously not everyone is going to have a lift. So if you're working with jacks in a jack stand, that's perfect. Just takes you a little bit longer to get set up there. But, and I do recommend jacks in a jack stand. Uh, I do recommend that you do have all four jacks. That is important. Uh, you do not want to not have all four jacks and then have to rely on uh, the jack itself. Not a good idea. So uh, I'm actually just gonna do a quick inspection of my engine bay area here. Just to kind of look around, make sure everything looks good. Just gonna take, wanna make sure there's no leaks anywhere. We're looking solid over there. We're looking solid across the front. I either need to clean or, I'm sorry, I either need to replace my intake air filter or clean and re-grease it because it is uh, definitely out of grease, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see, that's shooting all up from the axle. I do have a slight situation uh, that needs to be fixed. I just do not have the money to uh, replace the part at this time, which is, uh, oh nice, which is my driver's side axle that, uh, come on. All right, well, that looks good. Let's get that seated back on properly. My poor engine bay needs a detail, but uh, things that you want to kind of look over while uh, you have the hood open, because you're going to be curious, is your engine air filter in good condition? You want to make sure that it is. If you have aftermarket, just take a look at it and inspect it and just make sure that it's... Um, you know, there's not a lot of dirt, debris, clog, etc., etc. You want to check your coolant level and your coolant reservoir. I still have plenty of coolant in there. Perfect. And then obviously, uh, have a light, take a look around, inspect everything, make sure there's no leaks of any kind. That's the last thing you want to find is a leak somewhere. And if you do find a leak in your own vehicle, Don't get too scared, uh, too scared. I don't even know where I was, what I was trying to say there, but. Just cause you find a leak while working on your car does not mean that it's not gonna run right, so. But definitely notate it. And if you don't know where the leak is coming from, the source, um, and you're unsure that you can figure it out on your own, then definitely take it in somewhere where a professional will be able to help you out but big common mistake first thing here for doing your oil change is people not taking off the top oil cap here sometimes it's tight 
sometimes it's pretty easy to get off. I have a aftermarket uh, oil cap. This is from a cutie. It's got multiple different ways to take it off. You can just either twist it off. You can literally put, what is it, a 15 millimeter socket on here and break it that way. Uh, or if you have a small enough flathead or screwdriver to fit through these holes, you could break it that way as well. So super nice from a cutie uh, for them to do something like that. But uh, typically what I'll do is I'll just kind of wipe this down. If it's a little dirty. And uh, there's a seal on here. Just to make sure the seal is seated properly and it's still in good condition, which it is. Love to see it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just inspect your fluids. Make sure everything looks good, no leaks, none of that stuff in nature. That's all the way up, nice. Let's go ahead and check our tires. I'm gonna do, I'm basically doing a uh, kind of decent inspection all the way across, just checking everything, making sure everything's solid. We're looking at a seven 30 seconds tread and a seven 30 seconds tread there. So we got seven 30 seconds tread in the front, which is awesome. And we have, let me remeasure. Six and five. So seven, seven in the front, five and six in the rear. Uh, if you're inspecting tires, always look across the tire and visually see if it looks like bald on the sides uh, or even if you have kind of excessive wear across the tire. Uh, that could be a case of either under inflation or over inflation. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your tires set to the proper tire pressure. Uh, if you're wondering what that is, a good rule of thumb, 35 PSI. Uh, can't go wrong with 35 PSI. It's kind of like the median and it's going to give you pretty much close to the best results. The best results that you're going to get are what the manufacturer will tell you to, to uh, run your PSI at for both front and rear. Uh, there's going to be a sticker when you open your driver door and it'll tell you on there, at least on most vehicles. On mine it does. But All right, so what are you going to need? Every vehicle is different, Hondas in specific. Uh, most of the vehicles will have this uh, cheap metal undershield just to protect the underbody from uh, any rocks, debris, whatever might get smacked up on here. Mine's taking a lot of damage because I used to drive real low and scrape the hell out of this. But what are you gonna need? Like I said, just depends on your vehicle. Get underneath it, give it a look, find out what you need. For me personally, I need a flathead in order to get these little plastic tabs out that hold this shield in place. And technically, I would need a Phillips as well, but I lost those screws and replaced them with bolts. And it looks like only one. So I'm going to need a 10 mil, which is no problem. Run off to the side here. Um, if you do need a socket to remove your undershield. Socket and ratchet works just fine. Definitely do not need to go ball out on an impact. I would say that you do not need an impact until you're starting to, I don't know, take off your own wheels, do your own tire rotation. Um, speaking of which, seven's in the front and five and six in the rear. We're gonna leave the two sevens up front. This is a front wheel drive vehicle, which means that basically this is the trailing and the rears are the leading. So your tires are gonna wear quicker up front because they're doing all the work. So we want the better tires up front. If I was to have the five and six up front, and leave those sevens in the rear, I would wear the, those, those, I would wear the five and six a lot faster to the point where I'd have to replace two tires instead of all four. So 
trying to create even wear across all the tires to, to wear, uh, they all go bad at the same time. And then I do the whole full replacement. Um, now it might be hard to tell. I don't know. I, I'm going to need this area to work with here, but every drain bolt, just depending on your vehicle, is going to be different. So particularly, per, per tick, particularly, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you're going to, where was I going with that? I got, I got screwed over by trying to say a word right. Um, you're going to need a socket regardless. Size-wise, you can always look online. There's forms. Um, if you have no idea on how to do anything, there's plenty of videos like the one I'm making here, uh, or there's a plenty of forms. There's the information that you need. It's out there. You just got to search for it. Uh, but particularly for mine, I need a 17. So I already have that set up here. Off to the side. We're going to be using my 1738 socket with the Icon 38's ratchet. I use this on a daily to crack these suckers open. And we're just gonna get that loose for now. You do not wanna take it all the way out. I do not have anything to catch that oil with. Now, because I do this for a living and I work at a dealership, I have this very nice drain bucket, which holds a lot of oil. Um, for those that are at home doing this on jack and jack stands, obviously get a uh, oil uh, catch bucket. They're not super expensive. Um, I would honestly say if you were to try to do this on your own and you wanted to start doing your own oil changes instead of taking it to the dealership, one, because you just don't trust the dealership, um, or two, you wanna have the satisfaction of knowing that uh, you did your own work and you know you did it right. Um, it'll probably cost you what it would cost to go to the dealership the first time just for buying all the parts that you would need. Uh, it actually costs more if you didn't have jacks in a jack stand. So the first time around, you're probably going to be spending more money than what you would spend here at the dealership, but you got to think long term. So the more oil changes you do on your own, the more money you're going to end up be saving in the long run, which is nice. I have also here a aftermarket drain bolt for my old drain bolt. Uh, this is a Spoon Sports uh, drain bolt with a magnetic uh, in here to catch all of the shrapnel shards um, that just kind of build up over time. Very rare in the engine unless something is wrong. Uh, but as I'm looking here and I bring it up close, not sure if it'll autofocus on that or not, but this looks in solid condition. So I'm gonna take a rag to this clean this up very nicely. Uh, the oil that's coming out, by the way, not super dark. I, uh, I kind of am, I guess, anal, you could say, on how often I do my oil changes, um, at least every 2,000 miles, which is pretty excessive. I would say three uh, at the minimum for most people out there. Someone has a guest in the showroom. Sales is still open. We're officially closed, which is why I'm making this video right now. But definitely uh, clean your drain bolt. Get it all nice and spicky span. Uh, you always want a washer. Some vehicles will have rubber washers. Uh, my Honda, we use this little crush washer right here. So make sure if you do have a crush washer, replace it. Do not reuse it. Uh, if you reuse it, there is a chance that uh, it will not work as well because you've already put pressure against it to keep the oil where it needs to be or whatever fluid. Uh, you, you get what I'm saying. But anyways, it's been a long day for me. And I would like to go home, but I also wanted to make this video for y'all so and myself because I thought it would be fun. Oil filter, uh, located in a whole bunch of different areas on every vehicle, um, just depending on what vehicle you own, but particularly for mine, super easy access. Um, 
sometimes it's so tight you need these you need some uh, old filter pliers um, and these 90% of the time will get it done to where you can get it loose if that doesn't work then you're going to want something like this um, which just goes on the bottom of the filter and then you can take uh, like a small extension and a ratchet to it and you can break it off that way uh, but I shouldn't need to do that because I've done this so many times it is tight on there actually it's actually wow okay look at me jinxing myself so I'm gonna take my pliers grip it grip it and uh, I like how I said that twice just get it nice and a little loose and then we'll get the bucket over the filter to where I can loosen this up more and let the fluid drain out from there I think my neck just popped but some people will go all the way with a filter and get super messy I get it loose enough to where I can move out of the way and not be messy and it'll drain majority of the oil that's in that area and then once it's basically done draining that I'll grab the rest or I'll grab the filter unscrew it all the way and let the rest drain out and that goes there you have a call on 7-3 All right, so it's probably hard to tell on camera, especially since they turned uh, the lights off over here. Uh, but it's still draining oil from where your oil filter housing is. And now it's dripping, so we're good. But something I see a lot of people not do is clean the base of which your oil filter sits. So if I could give you an uh, example, this is your oil filter. So you're gonna screw it all the way on and then it's gonna have like a base that it seats on once it's screwed all the way on. That base, I see a lot of people don't clean up. When you pull that oil filter off, it's covered in oil. So you're gonna want rags, that's for sure. To clean that area up and clean the base up. Now, you do not wanna leave oil on the base because it could lead to improper seating of the gasket that's on the filter, which in return could cause an oil leak. And then you do that job and you don't clean the base here. You're like, man, I just did my oil change. Everything's done right, right? You got it all done. You're super happy. Just did that shit myself. And then uh, you leave it overnight, come back in the morning, drive off, and you realize there's a puddle underneath your car and you're like what the heck well I can tell you it's because you probably did not clean that oil filter base up and the gasket on the oil filter itself did not seat properly because of that I am getting my new oil filter ready to go on now this next part is completely up to you you can either put fresh clean oil around the gasket here on the oil filter, the new one, or you can take the old, uh, old oil and just kind of run your finger around. I have a little tray up here with residual oil, so works plenty good for me here. But uh, if you're doing this at home and uh, like, will I use a new oil or the old oil? New oil is just best if you're just trying to be like, I don't know, super anal about it. But for me personally, even though it is my own car, um, for something like this, I just need some oil on there. It's, it's new versus old on, on the seal or the gasket is not gonna make a world of difference. I've been noticing that uh, these new filters we've been getting are there we go. All right. Now, 
what is tight enough so that oil does not leak from the filter. I've been doing this for a long time, so I got enough strength in my arm and my hand to get this tight enough to where I know for sure that it will not leak. There's torque specs online uh, for oil filters. Do your research um, if you want to be spot on with it. But I personally know from doing this so many times that I'm not going to have any leakage coming from my oil filter. Um, yeah, pretty much it. We want to get our new crush washer on our drain bolt here. So I'm going to grab that right now. Come back over. Okay. Dripping from the pan means that pretty much all of the old oil is officially out. So you can go ahead and slide that drain bolt back on. I kind of clean up this area a little bit and then I'll get it all the way back on. Nice and snug. Get this out of the way. I do not need it anymore. And then of course, as always, there's a torque spec for almost every bolt. Uh, this is a preset torque wrench provided by Honda. Um, preset to 31 foot pounds, which is the torque spec for oil drain bolts. Even though I have an aftermarket drain bolt, it does not change the torque spec of which the drain bolt needs to be torqued. That's it. That's all we got to do. And she's done. Now, on a customer, ve uh, customer vehicle, I'll add some uh, torque seal. It's an indicator paste. Basically, I would add it right along here, and I'll even draw a smiley face on the oil filter. Uh, that just lets me know that I've done my job properly. And uh, if the customer ever decides to question whether or not I did their service for them, uh, well, they'll be happy enough to know that I torqued down their drain bolt and their oil filter is on there tight enough to where it will not leak fluid with a nice smile right back at them. So, because trust me, uh, customers will always try to find anything wrong with their vehicle that you may have done to get free shit. Cool, so that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the shield back on. By the time that you have everything tightened up, oil filter, drain bolt, you're ready to put everything back on. It's just reverse process. Step by step, one thing at a time. If you feel like it's too much, let me be the one to tell you, trust me, it is not. Do not feel overwhelmed. You'll be okay. And do remember, if it is your first time and you feel like it's taking you forever, you're learning. It's the name of the game. But the nice thing is, is once you do it once, it should, in theory, stick with you to where next time you get it done a lot faster. And while I have the car up in the air here, uh, I am going to check my tire pressure. That was probably loud as shit. <laughs> uh, like I said, while I have it up in the air, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure our tire pressure is all good. I run factory PSI, which is, you know, what's best rated for the car, or for the tires, I guess. Um, which, if I remember correctly, is 33 PSI in the front and 32 in the rear. We're about to find out here. Oh, I also need a, I, I swear I've changed both sides already, but now I need another one. Uh, fog light housing assembly. Uh, if you ever decide to be low, then uh, yeah, you run the risk of break shit a lot lower so all right so this is 32.7 so we're gonna say 33 right on the dot 
Uh, if you have a, oh geez, what is it? An air compressor at home, then you'll be able to even air up or deflate your own tires. If you need a tool that can do that, just look up a uh, tire inflator gauge on Amazon or just online in general, and you'll find something that you'll be able to get the job done with. So based off the PSI on the front tires, it's looking like if I remember correctly, the fronts are at 33. We were at 32.7, no problem. 32 exact. So we'll go one PSI just like that. I've been doing this for long enough to where I can just go, go, go. Check these back ones. What are we looking at? 31.4, so yeah, I definitely know that the rear here is 32. The poor spool needs a wash. Oh, man. It's just every time I wash it, it rains. <laughs> like the day after. Or even the day of. That has happened to me, unfortunately. 31.7, 32. Very nice. So our tire pressures were good enough to where I know that I do not have any uh, leaks anywhere in the tires to where I'd have to go off and uh, end up you know patching the tire or even as much as replacing if the puncture is too close to the sidewall or literally on the sidewall that would suck so glad i am in the clear there reel that back up that's it super easy now you're done with like i don't know 90 percent of it I'm thinking, man, I don't know if I want to do it next weekend or not, but maybe. We'll see how we're feeling. But I want to lower the rear a little bit more to level out with the front. My current stance that I'm running is uh, called negative brake, meaning that the front end sits lower than the rear. Not by a ton, but it is noticeable to the point where it's like I've been running this for a while. I've been digging it, but I'm ready to be a little bit lower. Make the rear look a little bit lower. So maybe next weekend we'll adjust the uh, coil over. But the downsides being low is it does make it harder to get one on jack stands and two, if you have a lift, it makes it hard to get on the lift as well. So, all right, we're on to the next step. I'm gonna be running all the way over yonder so you may not see me but get a funnel save your life do not spill oil all over the place get a funnel please AutoZone O'Reilly's they got it alright so you're probably wondering as I'm walking away how much oil do I need to put in my car? Well, hopefully it's not too windy. They got fans blowing over here, but look online. Seriously, everything that you want to know is online. Just about. For a job as simple as this, it's all online, I promise. For me personally, my vehicle is going to take 3.7 quarts. And we're gonna get 3.7 on the dot over here. All set. And walking back over. What's up, what's up, what's up? We're gonna get you resituated to where you can see how I'm gonna do this. Down, down, down. Cool. All right. So obviously, where you took your oil cap off, same place you're going to put your oil in. And having the funnel means you can just pour a lot real quick and not have to worry about spilling anything. 
just like that. Super nice. Fresh oil every 2,000 miles. Hopefully, I'm sorry if it gets loud as I get closer to the mic there, but yeah, I am beat as you may or may not be able to tell, but clean that up. Good there. And uh, there's no torque spec for your oil cap. Just get it on there. Nice and snug. And you'll be good. That's literally that. That's all it took. We're going to swing off over into the car now. And at least on a Honda, if you own a Honda, uh, I might be able to show you how to reset your maintenance minder. Turn that off so you don't get a bunch of noises here. Get a quick message saying check engine oil and then it goes away, which means we're good. Now, coming over here, oh man. Find your settings, vehicle. We need the e-brake up, because this is a manual. Maintenance info, and then this is where you can see all of your maintenance minders. For me personally, my oil life is currently at 80% and maintenance minor B, which is oil and filter. I recommend that you change the filter every time you do an oil change. We're gonna do all due items. Just do a full reset. And that's it. If there was a situation to where, uh, say like your tire was at like 17, 18, and even 20 PSI, just substantially lower than what it's supposed to be at and uh, your tire lights on then at that point do a TPMS calibration which for Honda's at least this one in particular uh, is here at the top and do a hard reset uh, there's a difference between just doing the calibration once and then doing a hard reset which will actually do a full like relearn uh, as to where that light won't come back on uh, you have to do that three times. So basically you just hit TPMS calibration, calibrate, and do that three times over. And then that will knock it into a hard reset mode to where you will not have to worry about your tire light coming back on unless you have a ongoing tire leak. And in that case, you need to patch your tire. But that's pretty much it for how to do your oil change. If you want, I've done this so many times that I know I, know I do not need to check my dipstick which will show you your uh, level of oil but it's your first time I would highly advise that you do check your dipstick make sure that um, that oil level is sitting in the right spot um, and yeah that's that's pretty much it uh, when you do check it do know that you want to have the car off for say a minute or two Pull it out once, wipe off the oil that's currently on the dipstick, put it back all the way in, and then take it all the way back out. And then by that time, you'll have a more accurate reading of what your oil level is sitting at based on the dipstick. Uh, and you can go from there. There's markings on every different dipstick um, that will kind of give you a range between too low or too much. So when you pull that dipstick out, you'll be able to tell whether or not you're within the range, too far out of the range, or you don't have enough oil in the vehicle. If you don't have enough oil in the vehicle, uh, it should display on your MID, which is your information display, that uh, you have low oil, which would indicate a little kind of like oil bucket, and it would be red. So that's pretty much it. That's how you do your oil change, uh, at least on a 2019 Honda Civic Si. Uh, appreciate you all for tuning in, hanging out with me. Uh, seeing how I personally do my oil changes, uh, especially on my own car. If you enjoyed this video, please do not leave without leaving a like. Feel free to comment. If you have any questions, do not feel hesitant to ask. Uh, I am 
more than happy to try to respond to all of your comments. Um, I've been trying to get to all of y'all within a reasonable time frame, uh, so that way y'all don't feel like I'm not actively seeing what y'all are putting out there for me. So I do appreciate everyone that does comment on my videos, um, whether it's asking, you know, uh, what type of uh, item uh, is it that you have, you know, interested in buying, um, or even if it's just a basic question, more than happy to do my best to answer that question for you. So thanks again for tuning in. Appreciate you all. Um, your love and support uh, continues to drive me to continue to make more content like this. So uh, with that being said, hope you have a uh, fantastic morning, day, evening, night, whatever time you are watching this. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. It's free. Uh, Got to put that out there, um, especially if you want to see more content like this. And yeah, that's going to do it for me. Thanks again for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you on the next video. Peace.